What's going on? Thanks for checking in. Today I have the best upper body strength exercises for baseball players. Make sure you stay tuned. Check this one out. All right, so I got my man Jam Juice, Jamal Howard in the building who's gonna help us out demonstrating these golden upper body exercises. So exercise number one, we're talking about building the chest. Coming in at number one is one of the most conflicting exercises out there for baseball players, but I'm here to tell you, you guys gotta be bench pressing. So first, here's how to progress the bench press. Go ahead, get yourself some dumbbells to get comfortable, then you can move on to a barbell, and then the best option is the football bar or neutral grip barbell. So we're gonna show you how to do all three here today. So first, we'll go ahead, grab our dumbbells. How you hike these back is you place them on your knees, Go ahead, lean back, and hike them up to a good neutral position. So once you get comfortable with the dumbbells, you can go ahead and graduate to a barbell. The barbell bench press is one of the best compound exercises you could possibly do for the upper body. We have the Rogue Ohio bar right here, so it has perfectly slotted knurling on each side where the athlete can put their thumb. You don't wanna go wide, like I said before, not make it a wide grip bench press. You wanna try to simulate the same exact angle that you did on the dumbbells, that 45 degree natural angle. You're gonna try to do that while holding the barbell. From here, we're keeping that wrist nice and straight and we're gonna try to bend the bar in half. So go ahead, keep those wrists nice and stacked. Start bending that bar in half and lower slow to the chest. Now I'm gonna show you a football bar or a neutral grip bar. These are my favorite bars for baseball players because it already draws those elbows in at that angle we want due to the grip. And this is my ultimate favorite bar. The reason why is there's a camber. So it allows the athlete to get deeper into that end range position. So not only are we building strength, we're building length at that end range. So this is a very good way to build hypertrophy size, to build build range of motion and to also build strength and power. The bench press primarily targets the pec major, delts, and triceps. These are all crucial for generating power in baseball related movements, especially throwing. Strengthening these muscles can improve force production and efficiency during that overhead throwing position. Also, the pec major plays a big role in transferring energy from the lower body and the trunk to the upper extremities during the throwing motion. This energy transfer is referred to as the kinetic chain. This involves sequential activation of muscles from the lower body throughout the core and into the arms and then into the ball. The pec major helps transmit this energy from the torso to the throwing arm, which is a massive contributor to how hard somebody can throw. Bench pressing also builds stability in the shoulder joint that is very important for proper alignment that prevents injuries, especially considering the high forces and stresses placed on the shoulder during the acceleration and follow through phases of these elite throws. So the bench press took care of the horizontal press targeting the chest. Now we'll turn around, do the exact opposite. We'll go horizontal pull targeting the lats. So coming in at number two is a big horizontal row for the lats. My favorite is a seated cable low row. We have the cable machine stacked up. We have a neutral grip. This is a comfortable grip for the athlete to do a lot of weight and have a high strength stimulus. So how we're gonna do this is place our feet up on a machine. Go ahead, scooch our butt back. We're gonna reach forward, get a big lat stretch. Now come pack the lats and hold. Try to pinch a pencil between your scaps. Now we're gonna lower slow. One of a major benefit to this exercise is getting scapular retraction. Eccentric rows, especially heavy like this, focus on scapular retraction, which is the action of pulling the shoulder blades together towards the spine. So it's that thought of pulling those shoulder blades back, trying to break a pencil in between your scaps. This retraction is important for achieving optimal shoulder positioning during the pitching motion. 
strengthening the muscles involved in scapular retraction, such as the rhomboids and middle traps, can help pitchers maintain a stable and efficient shoulder position throughout the throwing motion. This exercise here, the eccentric low row, gets you strong, and I mean strong. So with that strength, those muscles are gonna be able to withstand a lot more repetitive stress encountered during pitching. Exercises like this, where you can overload the eccentrics, stimulates adaptations in the connective tissues surrounding the shoulder joint as well, such as tendons, ligaments, etc. So over time, with these heavy eccentrics, these tissues become stronger and more resilient to forces generated during pitching, which in turn reduces that risk of tendonitis, ligament sprains, ligament tears, etc. Training for baseball performance has never been easier. This app is year-round training, specifically designed for your age group. There are four programs on the app that we run year-round. Our Youth Power Program for ages 12 to 15, our D1 Bound Program for high school athletes looking to earn that D1 scholarship, our Golden Spikes Program, which is the exact same program our D1 All-Americans are using, and our Big League Program, which is designed for the professional baseball player, and it's the same program our guys in the show are doing every single day. So if you click the link in the description, you can start that program for a free trial. Now back to the program. So there's the horizontal pull targeting the lats. So now we'll turn around here and exercise number three is gonna target the shoulders. To get the benefits of overhead pressing in a safe manner, we like to use the landmine. My favorite positioning on this landmine is a split stance standing position. From here, the split stance position, whatever leg is forward, that is the opposite of where you're pressing from. How we're gonna do this is we're gonna come a little bit tighter, almost resting on the shoulder. In that split stance position, we're gonna throw up one side or the opposite side that the landmine's in. Tap down, pull it up. Notice how Jamal's head punches through at the top. This allows him to be in a good safe position at the top of the rep because we don't want that shoulder to flare or that head to flare back, placing a lot of stress on the AC joint. We want to pack it, making the head and the shoulder and the weight all in the same line. A big reason I like the landmine is like I said, if done correctly, it is very safe. The landmine press allows for a more natural scapular humeral rhythm compared to traditional overhead pressing exercises. All this means is that the movement pattern of the shoulder blade or scapula and arm humerus is more coordinated and biomechanically efficient. This reduces the risk of impingement and overuse injuries commonly seen in baseball players. The landmine press also minimizes excessive elevation of the shoulder blade and promotes optimal alignment of the glenohumeral joint. And this is what you want when you're pressing overhead. If you look here, you can tell that Jamal is using his core as well. So there's big core stability and integration in this exercise. And as we know, baseball players rely on that core stability to transfer force efficiently between the lower body and upper body during throwing and during hitting. The landmine press engages these core muscles, including the rectus abdominis, internal and external obliques, and transverse abdominis. These muscles stabilize the torso and pelvis during the pressing movement making it an effective exercise for enhancing core stability and integration in baseball specific on field movements. Another big thing in baseball is developing asymmetries in strength and muscle activation between their dominant and non-dominant sides due to the unilateral nature of the sport. You swing one way, you throw one way, etc. The landmine press can help address these asymmetries by training each side of the body independently. This promotes that symmetrical strength development, which in turn reduces the risk of injury. Okay, exercise number four took care of the vertical press targeting the shoulder. Now we're gonna turn around and go posterior once again, and we're gonna go to a vertical pulling action that's gonna hit the lats in a different angle. 
the GOAT of all upper body exercises for baseball players, and that is a typical pull-up. How you do pull-ups is based on comfort. If you wanna go underhand grip, make it a chin-up. That's fine, but sometimes guys start to feel little tweaks in their elbow on the ulnar side. If that's uncomfortable for you, you can go overhand grip. That's gonna make the exercise a little bit more challenging, decreasing your leverage. But the best way that we found the most comfortable way with our overhead throwers is that neutral grip position, already placing your wrist in line for a good pulling action. Taking a look at pull-ups here, they primarily target the muscles of the back, including the lats, the rhomboids, the traps, as well as the biceps and forearms. But the main mover we are looking for here are those lats. The lats play a critical role in the throwing motion, primarily during the acceleration and the follow-through phase. During the acceleration phase of throwing, the lats contract forcefully to extend and adduct the shoulder joint. This action pulls the upper arm or humerus backwards and inward towards the body. The lats contribute significantly to the speed of the arm movement, helping propel the ball forward with greater force and greater velocity. The lats also play a massive stabilization role in the deceleration phase. After releasing the ball, the arm undergoes rapid deceleration to dissipate the kinetic energy generated during the acceleration phase. A ton of injuries happen here. So pull up strength in the lats along with other muscles of the rotator cuff and shoulder girdle. These muscles help stabilize the shoulder joint and control the deceleration of the arm, reducing the risk of injury and maintaining overall shoulder health. Hey, that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed those five upper body exercises I believe that are essential for baseball players. And if you wanna train with the same methods that our elite players train in here, click the link in the description. There's a seven day free trial there to our Summers Method Plus app that has year round training, whether you're a youth player, whether you're a high school player, whether you're a college player, and whether you're a professional player. So click that link in the description to get that free trial. And always remember, we're pumping out weekly content on this channel. So if you could do me a favor, subscribe for me, and we'll catch you next week. Game rewards are grinded, knows how much you invested.